Neil Gorenflow is the executive director of Shareable, an award-winning non-profit news outlet, action network, and consultancy focused on the latest innovations in resource sharing. Sharing. He's an author, speaker, consultant, movement builder, and editor of multiple books, including Sharing Cities, Activating the Urban Commons. In 2011, he co-founded the Sharing Cities movement, now in over a hundred cities worldwide. He helps organizations around the world meet their, goal, meet their goals through sharing, including the Sharing Economy Association of Japan, Seoul Metropolitan Government, and the city of San Francisco. He's currently blogging a one-year life experiment called The Year of Living Locally to explore a more coherent, commons-based, and sustainable local lifestyle. As a social entrepreneur, Neil's call to action is simple yet systemic. Let's share. So, Neil, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Sadia. Um, really appreciate the chance to speak. And, uh, you know, I want to thank the whole SCA team, Carolina, and, and so forth. What a great lineup. And uh, um, hope you are all are doing well. Uh, on, it's Sunday morning here in, in Mountain View, California, where I am. Um, and my year living locally actually was last year. And uh, let me share my slides. Um, and I'll give you the result of my year, which is, you know, a little gift to start out um, a free ebook. So let me just go ahead and share. All right. Um, yeah, so please go to the link and download the book. You can get the whole story, but I'm going to give you the gist of it in the next 30 minutes or so. And, you know, um, what, what, why I did what I did, what I did for this year, and then 10 things that I learned from, from the year and from, uh, and the lessons learned are from kind of local systemic, systemic change perspective. Uh, so at the beginning of, of uh, 2020, um, I decided to do a life experiment and this is something I've done in the past, but I wanted to do it around living locally. Um, I really felt like the toxicity in our culture in, in American culture had really reached kind of epic proportions and maddening proportions and, um, felt like it'd be really useful and a good learning experience and maybe uh, improve my outlook and my mood a little bit. If I redirected my attention to things from this hyper symbolic world of media to things right in my backyard that I could get my hands on. Right. And, and, uh, so, so that was, that was the, uh, sort of goal for, for 2020. Um, and I would blog it. So that was the other thing just kind of show my experiences as, as I go about my project. Um, and then really focus on three levels of action, personal neighborhood and city level for my kind of local stuff, you know, and try, try a bunch of things in each of those categories, personal neighborhood and city. And, um, you know, starting out, it was, it was pretty slow going. Um, you know, as I tried to, you know, chart a path and open up the thread of different activities, uh, that I wanted to undertake, uh, one of the things I did, which really got things going quickly was, uh, started a cool block in my neighborhood. A cool block is a climate action program where you get your neighbors together and uh, take climate action to, together, you know, things that you can do not, it's not advocacy, it's actually action, you know, uh, changing your diet and how you travel and, you know, insulating your home and how you see your home. And it also has, um, ways to make your, your neighborhood better, including some sharing modalities, which that really interested me. Um, and also, uh, disaster preparedness. So it's, it's more than climate action. It's kind of this, those three areas. And I actually knocked on 57 doors in my neighborhood and recruited a block team. So I actually went out there and knocked on doors to talk to people. That was really cool. I was kind of scared about that, but it turned out to be super empowering. And like, got really into it. I brought my son, son my 11 year old son, Jake. Um, 
um, he was 10 at the time and, uh, uh, and ended up just really loving and connecting with it. And we started this, this cool block group and it's like eight meetings. And, uh, we had the, uh, the information meeting, the first information meeting, which is where you actually get people to commit You tell them what it's all about, you know, and you make it a party. We had, we had, you know, nice little spread and some, and some beverages and so forth. And, uh, so it was a nice congenial get together and most people who came decided to sign up. But then what happened was the pandemic hit, right? And things got a whole lot more local than I ever expected. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we decided to continue the cool block program and, and do it virtually the cool block mothership, the organization that runs cool block, um, they decided that or a suggested that people pause it, but we went ahead and did it. And that was a really great decision because, um, we used it as a, not only did the program, but as a channel to help one another in our community. So we did all kinds of, um, you know, we did uh, all kinds of mutual aid and we did three drives for PPE to, um, give to, uh, local, local hospitals, um, anything spare that we had, uh, we also collected food, uh, we collected toiletries for those living without a roof over their head and, and, um, and, the, and we also opened a Slack channel. We did everything through Zoom. And so we went total virtual and, uh, and this became like this, a catalyst for all kinds of projects in, in our neighborhood, all. Uh, you know, we repaired our irrigation system that was leaking badly. We ended up saving a half a million gallons that year because we patched it up. Um, there was, all, uh, people did all kinds of swaps. We did two or three, um, swaps and did them, uh, you know, safely, socially distanced. And we have a nice common area. So everyone would put a blanket down in an area and put their gear on that. And. They, these were spread all over the lawn. So that was kind of cool. Um, and, uh, we got it, you know, renegotiated our grounds contract and, and, uh, and, you know, our neighborhood had, I've been, lived here for over 10 years and our neighborhood had never been so active as this period. It was really, really great. And, and, uh, and when things sat down a little bit, um, you know, after a couple of these, um, you know, lockdowns, I got back to the list that I made and started doing that. And, you know, so I switched from a big bank to a credit union, explored our local e ecosystem and history, do some hikes and reading, got involved in the local elections more than I ever had. Also national elections, all ex explore starting a library at our local, all the library of things at a local library. And all, um, yeah. And also one of the big challenges or my year was reducing my screen time, really replacing my screen time with civic time. And, uh, and so the, the impacts of this, you know, some of it I could measure, like, so my cool, cool block group on um, reduced annual carbon emissions by over 44,000 pounds through 159 actions over six months. We reduced our water consumption by 62% in our neighborhood, um, that equated to about a half a million gallons of, of water on, um, and we saved our community around $25,000 and there was, um, over 4,000 messages in our Slack group between, uh, between neighbors. And this was, you know, everything from, you know, very practical hands-on things, you know, getting advice, um, sharing, uh, sharing all kinds of material people giving each other baking bread and, and giving out baked goods. Uh, but also just, you know, people sharing cat pics and having a little fun together online as well. So, so that was really cool. And so for the rest of the, the presentation, I'll just share, uh, you know, what I learned and, uh, a lot of what I, a lot of what I learned was, I think stuff I knew or had a hunch about, but doing this really hands-on, um, life experiment really haggard some of them home. Really, I feel like I embodied them 
in a new and powerful way.